What your money would say. <laughs> Andrew <laughs> is Rick Mayer. Money talks. <laughs> money talks. <laughs> Are you listening? <laughs> money talks. Are you listening? What your money would say with Andrew McNair. We're live here on What Your Money Would Say. I'm your host, Andrew McNair. And I'm your co-host, Scott Malik. Where we take financial ugly ducklings and turn them into financial swans. But what does it mean to be a financial swan? Well, when I started my wealth management firm, I was looking for a name that really encompassed what I believed in. And I found one. And it's, and it's Swan Capital. Sleep well at night. Because I believe that my clients, retirees who've worked their last 30 years working for a company, saving money in their 401k plan, putting three kids through college, and even finding a way to tithe and give to the local charities, deserve to sleep well at night. And the last thing you want to worry about is how to make sure your spouse or an elder parent doesn't run out of money in an assisted living or a nursing home. And I have a similar philosophy for when I uh, started my firm. I don't have, I'm still in the process of uh, coming up with my catchy slogan. We're at the drawing phase, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I, I really wanted to work with, with elderly clients my entire life. And so I have a real passion for helping elderly clients you know, fa- and facilitating them in creating uh, a good estate plan for themselves and f- to, to make sure we protect their spouses or their children and their loved ones as well. And so that's why my, my firm and my practice really focuses on estate planning, elder law, and estate administration. And I don't do, you know, a, I'm not a jack of all trades. I don't do... You don't have the billboard that says Social Security, DUI cases, and all that. Exactly. I like to focus on the stuff that makes that I'm passionate about, and that's helping elderly clients. Very wise. Today's show is paying for long-term care in the long term and because what we find is is when families start paying for long-term care insurance regardless of their assets regardless of their net worth they can spend it down very quickly in the time of need and so we're going to talk ex- very extensively how does a family take their future in their own hands and pay for the care for a loved one and before we do that i want to talk about the state of health care to kind of give you an idea if you're not familiar with it on how much health care can cost. Now, if you have any questions about placing an elder parent or a spouse into assisted living, skilled nursing, and you just want to talk and you know roll up your sleeves and ask some questions with an elder law attorney and someone that deals with wealth management for seniors, please give us a call on the show at 478-3116. That's 478-3116. And also, if you're, you feel like your question is too private in nature, you can always call my office at 380-9558. That's 380-9558. Or you can give my office a call at 403-0351. Again, that number is 403-0351. So with the state of health care, there's three main providers. And the first one, um, I hope Scott can start us off and talk about. Yeah, there are, you know, as Andrew mentioned, there are three levels of of uh, assisted living in for elderly clients or elderly care in in the Pensacola area and in the United States and and typically the first one is what we call home health care and that's for the the people that really want to to stay at home and and not move into a facility and they're not ready to move into a facility because we we deal with a lot of clients that you know they may want to stay at home for their their entire lives yeah they've been there for the last thirty or forty years exactly and so. You know, one of the, the the biggest things that we talk about, and it's it's typically the cheapest one to begin with, but can ultimately become one of the most expensive, is home health care. And the average cost for home health care in in the Pensacola area is between fifteen and nineteen dollars an hour. And so, wow. depending yeah, depending on on the amount of care that you actually need, or the amount of hours that that you need on a weekly basis or a monthly basis, the cost can either be relatively low compared to other options, or exponentially higher absolutely you know i'll give you a couple of examples we've helped families that were only paying um just five hundred dollars from home health care they just needed someone to come in a few hours a week prepare meals um do some you know meal prep not only prepare them but also serve them they did some medication management cleaned up around the house so they needed just a little bit of help then we've had people on the opposite scale and they wanted around the clock care 
And if you do the math, that's $13,000 a month. And we've had families that had, luckily had the resources, but they dwindled so quickly because when you're paying over $100,000 a year in health care costs, it can uh, erode can anyone's net worth. Yeah. And so the next one is what it was actually kind of a new kind of facility because most people are familiar with nursing homes and we'll get there. But let's talk about the second one. The second one and the second level is it's a little bit more intense than home health care. Well, depending on the amount of care you need at home, it's called assisted living facilities. And what those are are people that typically seniors that, that may not be able to do everything that they need to do, their activities of daily living, we call them ADLs. And they need help or assistance with that, hence the name assisted living facilities. So, you know, you may need somebody to cook for you. You may need somebody to do your laundry or, you know, you can't do everything for yourself anymore. So you may think and you just need some help, um, helpful supervision because God forbid your elder parents or loved one had a fall and uh, it, there wasn't a nurse on standby, that could be you know, a very crucial time and critical time where you would need a medical professional there. Exactly. Well, assisted living has that. Now, assisted living is not just for uh, severely sick and ill people. You know, I have clients that walk two miles a day, and they still live in assisted living. They just want some assistance with those activities of daily living. Now, the average cost, and, and you know, that, that's I mean, I, I wanted to reiterate that point before I talked about costs is, you know, assisted living facilities are not, like you said, just for people that really need health care. It's people, I mean, like my grandparents lived in assisted living facility, and, you know, they're healthy, they're active, and, you know, they just want, you know, they want a, a sense of belonging to society, you know, like... They want some social peers, interaction social, with people, exactly. their own peer group. Because not everybody's able to get out of their house once you reach those those advanced well, stages Well, you life. become reclusive, exactly. too. Exactly. And so, not careful. But the average cost in Pensacola is about $3,400 a month for wow. assisted living facilities. So it can be quite pricey. Yeah, I mean, a lot of families have maybe a three to $5,000 fixed income or relatively fixed because Social Security is only going up like 1.7%. And so $3,400 is pretty stout. And, you know, we talked, you know, a lot of our clients are, are baby boomers as well that are starting to think about, you know, 10, 20 years down the road. Right. They don't need the care now, but they will 10, 20 years exactly. from now. Exactly. And, you know, with them going up, at, I think assisted living right now is about 5%, the average rate of increase. Yeah. So if you do the math, $3,400 a day is going to cost you nearly $5,300 in just 10 short years. So if you're 70 years old right now and you might need assisted living when you're 80 or 90, you're looking at 5300 if you ex, uh, you know, go out even farther, you're looking at some very large costs that are going to start outpacing your current income. So if you're not thinking about how to pay for long-term care for the long term, this show is exactly for you. So if you're just tuning into what your money would say, I'm your host, Andrew McNair. And I'm your co-host, Scott Malik. And between my wealth management advice and his estate planning expertise, we hope to add some value to how you can pay for long-term care insurance for the long term. And then the last um, state of health care point we want to make is about the third and the highest level of care. And the third and the highest level of care is what's called skilled nursing facilities. And most people refer to them as nursing homes. It's, it's where you need that, that medical attention, that 24-hour supervision that has you know, a doctor or a nurse on staff that's 24 hours available in case there are medical needs and what ha- needs to happen and it needs to happen immediately. And, you know, the cost of that, obviously, as we know, healthcare in this country is ex- extremely expensive, especially with nurses, doctors. Um, so the cost of a skilled nursing facility in, in Pensacola, the average is between six and $7,000. Right. And that's a month. And those are, again, startling numbers. I mean, six to $7,000 is mostly a couple's entire income, let alone that's just for one person. You know, and, and we need to make that point. If you have a loved one that's in assisted living and then another in nursing home care, you could be ten, thirteen thousand dollars sometimes in in medical expenses. So you can erode wealth very quickly. So families immediately ask that, well, what's the solution? How do we fix this problem? Is Obamacare gonna fix me, Scott? Well, unfortunately, private pay is the only way if depending on your income and your assets to to pay for these facilities. And you're not going to get any help from, you know, the government in paying for these facilities. Right. And that, and that's shocking because a lot of families come to us and they're just basically one step from breaking down emotionally because they've always thought that Medicare or some other government program was going to save their family from eroding what they've worked 30 to 40 years for. 
and it's just not the case. So we have a solution that we're going to talk about exclusively, but we're going to take a short commercial break before we uh, talk about what solutions your family will have. We'll see you just in a few seconds. Welcome back to What Your Money Would Say. I'm your host, Andrew McNair. And I'm your co-host, Scott Malik. So we're talking about paying for long-term care for the long term. Now, if you have any questions about how to pay for long term care insurance, how to pay for long term care, um, please give us a call on the radio show. This is a live show. You can uh, call us at 478 3116. That's 478 3116. And we'll be happy to answer your question live on the air. Now, if your question is more private in nature, then we will sh- surely give you the opportunity to do that. By scheduling a free long-term care preparation assessment by calling my office at 380-9558. That's 380-9558. Or check out our website at swan, like the bird, dash capital dot com. Or you can call my office to set up a consultation um, regarding estate planning as well. Um, that number is 403-0351. Again, that number is 403 403- 0351 or you can visit my website as well which is www.pensacolaelderattorney.com I like that website it's easy so let's talk about what are the solutions we talked about the state of healthcare the state of healthcare is getting more complex and it's getting more expensive you got home health care which is 15 to 19 dollars an hour you have assisted living that's at 3400 dollars a month you have skilled nursing, which is seven, nearly $7,000 a month. So what's the solution? How do we pay for it? Well, there's two ways to take this into your own hands. There are two different kinds of long-term care insurance. Now, if you do already own long-term care insurance, this show is going to be for you as well because we're going to talk about some of the terms you need to know in your own policy to know if it's adequate enough. So let's talk about the traditional kind. And I'll tell you a story. I don't always feel comfortable telling, um, but it needs to be told. Is about my own grandfather. You know, just because you do wealth management for a living doesn't mean that uh, before you know some family members or friends take your advice or uh, allow you to work on their plan that mistakes don't happen and they can help and they happen to all the people you love uh, sometimes. And uh, my grandfather paid into long-term care insurance for 20 years. He, he thought he found a really good company. Uh, he was a man that paid his bills always on time. And he wanted to make sure that him and my grandmother were protected. And so he took what he thought in his, his own security of him and my grandmother in his own hands by buying that, that uh, product. And unfortunately, after paying into it for 20 years, the company sent him a, a bankruptcy letter, letting them know that they were unsure what benefits would be paid to him. And so that caused him a lot of pain and suffering because we had to look for other benefits to help us um, help subsidize the potential costs for long-term care. And it eventually played out that uh, when he did get ill and my grandmother got ill, uh, because of the elimination period, they actually never received anything for their investment. And that's why I'm not a big fan of traditional long-term care. And we're going to talk about what other kind of long-term care insurance is out there. Now, when you say traditional long-term care, do you mean like premium pay? Is that what you're talking about? That's exactly the type. I'm glad you brought that up. Traditional long-term care is just like auto insurance. You pay a premium you know, monthly, quarterly, yearly, and that coverage, as long as you pay, they'll protect you, or they say they will protect you. And uh, the thing is, it's, it's really a very good analogy. I mean, car insurance is one of those insurances you hope you never use. No one just gets out of bed and says, man, this is the day I want to use my car insurance. <laughs> You know, but long-term care is the same way. No one gets out of bed and says, you know what, I hope I have early-onset dementia so I can finally use this thing. No, you buy it to protect you and your family and your legacy that you work very hard for. And, and that's, I mean, that's a good, I like, I like that analogy because, you know, you, you really don't think about having accidents. You don't really plan. I mean, you want to plan for them, but you don't want to. It's like a double-edged sword. Yes, you know I mean? it is. So you want to plan for them, but you don't want to plan that they're going to happen because you don't want to have the reality that they're going to actually happen. Right. And I'm an optimist. I tell my clients, I plan for the worst, but hope for the best. Exactly. And that, and that's what you have to do when it comes to your finances. You know, you have to plan as if you could live forever or you could die tomorrow. And that's the hard thing about planning for your future, but it's got to be done. So traditional long-term care um, again, it's a three to six thousand dollar premium. Could be more, could be less, um, and it does have some pre-existing conditions. Um, it's based on age, 
So are, are there any alternatives to the, the traditional the premium pay? Absolutely. Um, now, if you own traditional, I'm not saying that you should immediately drop it and go check out this uh, form of long-term care insurance, but it's something that you definitely need to investigate, and you can call our office to find out more information about it. But uh, the new one that's kind of crept up on the scene of long-term care is what we call the long-term care insurance hybrid. Basically, it works very su- simple. Um, let's say, just for simple math, you had $100,000 of your portfolio that you could dedicate to protecting you and your family. Just a hundred thousand, not all of it. It's never a good idea to you know you know take in the majority of your portfolio to try to protect something that may not happen. Of course, of course, because you want to have contingencies. And- yeah, absolutely, and you want to enjoy your retirement. But let's say you could peel off and you could afford to peel off comfortably a hundred thousand dollars. Well, we would take this hundred thousand dollars. We could get a guaranteed two to three percent rate return on that. So it's never going to be more than. Um, it's never going to be less than that, which is. Really, really good. I mean, if you think about, I mean, the average rate of return on CDs and money markets right now is point nothing, point eight. Yeah, so it, it's two really to three percent guarantee is. I mean, that's a pretty good guarantee. It is. So uh, even if you die prematurely, uh, you never use the benefit. Then it's not like like traditional long term care with which is if you don't use it, you lose it, and the insurance company keeps your money. This actually can pass on to your heirs or your loved ones, which is really neat. So it, it helps to protect the legacy and the, the state. Exactly. You know, I wish my grandfather would have known about this because he could have passed on $100,000 nearly to his heirs or his charities. So, but what if you actually need it? What happens if the time comes where you do need that long-term care benefit? Well, what they do is they take that $100,000 and they times it by three, a three times multiple, uh, which is what they call it. And that $100,000 turns into $300,000 that can be used for long-term care expenses. So let me ask you this. Is, I mean, how do these, these companies make money then? I mean, if, if they're guaranteeing you money on your return and you can get it back from them, and then if you do need it, they, they get $300,000. You have to give, they pay you $300,000. I mean, what's the Sounds too good to be true, it right? It does, yeah. yeah. That's what, um, and, and I have a lot of families that say, that's just too good to be true. But we have families um, that have this, and it's a great benefit because – uh, how the companies, uh, they don't do anything for nonprofit, but what's nice is it's not at a penalty for you. It, everyone wins because you're protected. The company is able to have that capital. And just like banks, you know, when you give a bank a CD, they don't just keep it in the vault, do they? They go and invest it. And so if the company is making the bet that they can pr- make that promise and go make money. So, so I guess they're, they're hedging their bets basically against against you never having to use it, but at the same time, they're, if you do use it, they're 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 financially solvent to pay it, which exactly. is crucial. And so, the, they take that hundred thousand, and I'm just because obviously we we always talk about nobody does anything for free. No, no, and they, they so, certainly make a, they know. make a profit. But what's beautiful about it is it's not there's not a loser. You know, I hate uh, investments where there's a winner and there's a loser. Exactly. This is a win win, in, in that that you're protected, you get a guaranteed return, and the company is able to take that capital and make more money. For, for everybody. And see, I think that's important to highlight because there's a lot of people out there that would be concerned about, you know, I mean, giving up $100,000 is a, is a, it's a lot of money. But, you know, when you're thinking about um, paying for these things and, and you know, creating a, a plan for paying for long term, you know, these are the types of things that, that can really be beneficial. And like you said, with the guaranteed money and, and the roll up to three times, that's that's extremely important to know. It absolutely is. And so that is the difference between traditional and hybrid care. And we're going to talk ex- uh, extensively about someone that already owns a long-term care policy so you know what you owe. Let me ask you a couple more questions. Sure. Now, I, I mean, we talked about the, the hybrid. Is is there, like, I mean, age restrictions? Is there is there things that can disqualify you from being able to, to purchase those types of things? Because, you know, if we're talking about hedging their bets and the, you know, they want to, I mean, if there's somebody that's already in an assisted living facility, it's unfortunately too late. So it's then I, I guess my question is it's, if there is age restrictions and there are those, those disqualifications, we re, you really need to start thinking about it now. Yeah. There's age restrictions for both and pre existing conditions that you need to, uh, plan for, and that's why it's so key not to procrastinate. Because if you procrastinate, it doesn't benefit you. And so it's crucial if you are even interested um, in how to protect your legacy, your assets from being eroded by long term care, that you start looking at these options because they're not getting cheaper, they won't get cheaper, and neither will the cost of long term care. So if you have questions about 
how these work, this long-term care insurance hybrid or questions about how traditional long-term care works, give us a call at the radio show at 478-3116. That's 478-3116. We're going to uh, go for a quick commercial break so that you can gather your questions and give us a call. That's 478-3116 on What Your Money Would Say. We'll see you in just a second. We're back with What Your Money Would Say. I'm your host, Andrew McNair. And I'm your co-host, Scott Malik. And if you're just tuning into What Your Money Would Say, we're talking about paying for long-term care for the long term. And we're talking about ways where you can take your future and your security in your own hands. And we're talking extensively about long-term care insurance and how to navigate those waters. And instead of just being sold financial products, that you choose the right alternative and the right solution for your family. And I want to talk about how critical it is to prepare ahead. Because if you don't, you could suffer like one of our clients is. Because unfortunately, uh, there's a huge age gap between her and her husband. She's in her uh, nearly her late 70s. He's in nearly his uh, late 80s. So there's an obvious age gap here. And he's unfortunately getting in too um, high of a level of care that she can't maintain. So their income is about $2,500. They're paying $5,000 a month assisted living costs. So there's already a $2,500 deficit. Well, she still has to have living expenses. So there's an additional $2,000 just for her own. I mean, she's not living, you know, lavishly, right, uh, on $2,000 a month. Of course. I mean, you know, it's the just cost enough. of living now is, is extremely high, obviously. Yeah, you even if it. you have things paid off, you're exactly. going to need 1000 to 2000 So she's going negative 4500 to $5,000 a month. Well, luckily, she does have nearly half a million dollars, but half a million dollars may sound like a lot of money, but if you're going negative $50,000 a year, then you could eat through her entire portfolio just in less than 10 years. And what's startling and just absolutely scary for this family is, is let's say he lives to 95, which we have many clients that live to 95. He's ate through all those assets for her and left her who will be in her early 80s with nothing, destitute. And when he passes away, she'll even have less income. So the the sad reality is, is without planning, this could be your situation if you're not careful. And that's why we talk extensively about our younger clients purchasing long-term care insurance. And and, and that's why it's so important. I mean, Andrew keeps saying, you know, that, she's going to be destitute and that's and that's a reality that we all have to face is that the cost of of health care is not going down right. it's going up and so if we can barely afford it now we got to think about you know 10 20 years down the line that it's going to be even more costly and if our if our income you know we've talked about earlier in the show that you know co- cost of living adjustments aren't meeting the the inflation rates of these they're getting outpaced facilities. exactly by i mean by gross margins yeah and so it's extremely important to start thinking about them, even if you're not already, I mean, if you're not at that precipice where you're going to be moving in the near future into an assisted living facility, you know, you need to start planning. Before you have a health Exactly, scare. because that's it's so, so important to, to plan ahead for these costs so that we can eliminate the possibility of how am I going to pay for this? The other alternative is what I see a lot of families do is they just do the ostrich approach. You know, they stick their head in the sand saying, well, you know, you know, I've, I can, I'm playing God. I'll probably just pass away in my sleep. You know what? And, and is that happens to some families, but unfortunately, like my mother says, if you live long enough, anything can happen to you. And so that's why it's crucial to not just hope and pray that you'll go in your sleep silently. A lot of times, unfortunately, you become a burden on your children on uh, the whole system um, because you haven't prepared. So let's talk about the two options. you got traditional long-term care, which is the premium pay, and then you have the hybrid alternatives. But you may already own a policy, and if you already own a policy, I want you to be secure in what you, uh, uh, what you own because a lot of people own really great things, but they don't understand what they own because they were sold something instead of educated and advised on something. You mean I can own things I don't understand? <laughs> well, bl- yeah, plenty of people do. You know, I in legal too. perspective, I yeah. I understand that there's a lot of stuff in finance. I mean, I'll be the first to tell you, I don't know everything about finance. That's why, you know, I have financial advisor and I have these things in place because I don't understand everything that Sam on the legal side. I mean, there's things about power of attorneys, trust that I don't own. And that's why I got you, buddy. So, uh, then the next 
thing that we're going to do is we're going to take three terms and we're going to explain why they're important and you need to know uh, what your policy has for these certain definitions. The first one, uh, Scott, is start us off. So what what is a daily benefit? Let me just say, I mean, most people understand what the benefit of a policy is, but what is the daily benefit? What does that mean when they say in the policy, hey, you have this daily benefit? Right. It's not like uh, the the assisted living will send you a bill and they'll say, oh, well, we'll pay the entire bill. Not every policy will do that. Instead, they have what's it, like a per diem or a daily benefit. So if the assisted living is costing you $120 and your policy only pays you $100 per day, you have to come up with the difference of that $20 um, so you can pay that difference. So the daily benefit is an important number to know because nursing home care is $200 a day. Assisted living is at least $100 a day. And so if you're not planning for that, you might have a deficit even with the policy you already own. So it's important to know your daily benefit. So if you have this, these insurance policies, will they pay for the rest of your life? Is there? I mean, I know that there's, there's this term called benefit maximum. What, is, what does that mean? A benefit maximum is exactly that. The good old policy in the good old days when I run across these great policies that have unlimited benefits and I just, when I see that, I, I give the guy a big or the woman a big high five because the, that was a great investment. A benefit maximum that's unlimited is, is, is just that. They'll pay unlimited benefits for as long as you live. So if you live in assisted living for 10 years and you spend four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000, they pay it. However, that's not the case anymore. Typically now you're seeing a lot of benefit maximums at $250,000, $300,000, or as little as $80,000 benefit maximums. So so what exactly is the benefit maximum? It's basically your long-term care bank account. Basically what they'll do is when they start paying these benefits, they'll subtract every month or day out of this account until there's nothing left in it. And then when the, when that benefit maximum runs out, it's not like they keep on sending checks. They send you a letter saying, sorry, but you've used up your benefit maximum. Good luck. Hope you can take care of it from now on. So are you automatically eligible for these benefits? So what, I guess my question is, is there a period of time, like, so I guess the, 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 the policy term would be benefit period. What's, what does the benefit period mean? The benefit period is, is, um, is a really shocking thing in people's policies. And, and the children that have to deal with this for their elder parents are just, I mean, if they, for me, if it was me, I don't have any hair. If I had hair, I'd pull it out because it's where those things where you pay into a policy and you're expecting when you finally need it that it'll pay, but it doesn't. You know, it's, it's ludicrous. It's the only insurance I know that's kind of like this that has this, you know, benefit period. Because if you get in a car and, you know, car accident, well, they'll replace the car in a pretty fast time or give you a check for a new car. Well, not not long term care insurance. They make you, you know, you know, stress and they make you sweat because if you go into assisted living tomorrow, typically people have a what's called elimination period of 90 or 180 days. So that means you have to fork it out for 90 days or 180 days, basically a half a year before they'll pay one dollar. So you're basically saying that the benefit, what the benefit period means is that once you check into an assisted living facility, they basically, the long-term care insurance is basically saying you have to prove to us that you're going to be in here long-term before we start paying. Exactly. And uh, what's really sad is is statistically, and they know the stats, they're not dumb, uh, they know that many families will move, they'll wait as long as they can to stay in their home and they'll move finally into assisted living at the when they're at their, you know, really down on their luck and they're very ill, and then they'll pass away in the first 30 days. So the company takes everything and they make all the money. That's terrible. It really is. is it really that, is. I mean, that's. I guess that's similar to the story you told about your grandfather. It is, and that's why I'm not a big fan of traditional long-term care, and that's why it's crucial to learn more about these hybrid long-term care um, policies where what they'll do is – this long-term care hybrid, I'll tell you exactly how it works. If you have the ability, and I'm going to use 100000 for easy math, but if it's only 50000 for you and your family, then it's 50000 you got to work with what you have. But if you can comfortably peel off $100,000, let's say, for long-term care insurance and you want to protect you from spending, you know, from yourself from spending down the legacy for your spouse, and you purchase this long-term care hybrid, they'll take $100,000. 
and they'll invest it so that you make at least a two to three percent rate return. Well, I, I think that's important then to to kind of distinguish what you just said because I mean I know you gave the example of peeling off, but in reality it's it's more like an investment. It is because you're still making a rate of return on on the money that you're putting in. So if you do put that you know have that hundred thousand dollars. You're still getting two to three percent on that. Guaranteed. So it's guaranteed. Yeah. So, so this is a great alternative alternative for families that have money in CDs, and they're saying, "Well, my CDs are earning point eight. They're not earning two to three percent. And if I ever need long term care, I'm going to have to cash them out at a penalty and pay for this long term care." Well, this gives you the alternative. When you put a hundred thousand there, it earns two to three percent. But the day you need long term care, that hundred thousand gets times by three. And turns into three hundred thousand dollars for your family, and that's great because I have—I mean, I have lots of clients that come in, and they, like I said, I'm not a finance guy, so I don't know all the ins and outs of these things. I have clients that come in that do have, you know, when they talk about the finances that they have, the assets that they have, they tell me, you know, I have three, four, five hundred thousand dollars in CDs or in in the in my checking account, and so, you know, I guess my question is, what is the? Do you know the liquidity of? Of that, absolutely. There are some liquidities here. It's not like you put that money in there and you never can get it back. Um, there's ability to take out ten percent out, out every year, which so I mean, you still even have CDs. To it. Yeah. You know, so that's, yeah so well, that's, it, and, and people do need to know that when you take out the ten percent, obviously, uh, it won't still be earning interest because you've made the withdrawal. But yes, there is liquidity functions in this that CDs honestly don't have. So I think that's, I mean, that's an extremely beneficial thing that a lot of people may not know about because, like I keep saying, you know, I have clients that come in that have, you know, CDs that are in two, three, four hundred thousand dollar marks or checking accounts that are making, I mean, my checking account earns zero percent interest. Right. It's a jumbo honest. CD, jumbo so, as in like a jumbo shrimp and, and, and rate of return. It don't pay anything. So if you want to learn more about uh, these uh, potential long term care policies, uh, we, that we specialize in, give us uh, a call at Swan Capital at 850-380-9558. That's 850-380-9558. Or check out our website at swan-capital, that's swan like the bird, dash capital.com. Or if you have any uh, elder law questions, estate planning on how to structure or get prepared for placing a loved one into a long-term care facility, that's why we have Scott right here. And you can give my office a call. Set up a free, I do offer free consultations. The first, uh, the first appointment is always a free consultation. I encourage people to call in for that purpose. And to even if your estate plan is perfect, I will review it and I will go over it and I will tell you anything that needs to be fixed. And I want to add value. I know. Right. Andrew I mean, and, and it's nice value. when we can pull out that perfect stamp exactly. and stamp it on. We don't do it enough. Exactly. And so if you want to call my office, it's 403 403- 0351. Again, that number is 403-0351. Or you can go to my website. There's a, a place on the right hand side where you can request a consultation on the website. And the website is Pensacola Elder Attorney.com. That's www of course. Pensacola Elder Attorney.com. That's fancy. I like that. Pensacola Elder Attorney I got I gotta do something fancy since I don't have the the sweet the, the slogan. S- the Swan Capital yeah. Sleep Well at night. Yeah. We're still on your drawing board on your slogan. Exactly. We'll get it though. Um, so if you have a question that's just itching and burning, you want to ask it right now before you forget it, because I'm ADD. If I don't ask it now, it's, it's out the window for me. Let's give you that opportunity. It is a live show, so you can call with your question right now at 478-3116. That's 478-3116. We'll be happy to answer your question about long-term care right now. So let's uh, move on to another topic, and that is about the state of health care because it's one of those where you don't know why you need a solution until you understand and truly uh, grasp the problem. And the problem is the state of health care in our country. That's why we're constantly talking about reform in this country because the costs are like a runaway train that just can't stop and there's so much momentum that we can't stop it. So instead of trying to be... You mean you mean healthcare is expensive in this country? <laughs> I know, right? It, it, it's just escalating every day, and it's shocking how much it is. Um, but there's three uh, uh, care providers that really do the majority of the providing for seniors. And so if you'll start us off, Scott, and talk about the first one. So we kind of mentioned this earlier. So if you're, if you're just tuning in, we're kind of, kind of reviewing what we've been talking about. And, and we want to give everybody the chance to understand all of these different concepts. And so there's 
there's three levels, of, as Andrew mentioned, there are three levels of care that are available for assisted living. And, and the, typically the first people, the first one people always think about is what's called home health care. And w- what that is, is because most people, they want to stay in their home. Of course, you, you don't want to have to move. Nobody likes to, to sell their homes, to move, to have to, to move to some place. That's your identity fun. is in your backyard. Your identity is where you spent the last 30, 40 years. So I really respect that when people want to stay in their own exactly. home. Exactly. And so a lot of our clients really, they, they have this intense desire to, to stay at home until they pass away. Yeah. And so initially home health care can be one of the cheapest costs but it, it can eventually escalate into one of the most expensive mm-hmm. and you how know, much is it i mean don't Pensac- you have to you have to pay a provider like per hour right exactly in pensacola the average is 15 to 15 to 19 dollars per hour for home Ooh. health care so if you're thinking about you know coming in and- well i mean just think about it for a second if i have a child and the, i mean they're trying to provide for their parent and still work you know the, sometimes the children are paying for it and out of their own pocket, it's not like you can go to work in Pensacola and make fifteen, nineteen dollars an hour just so you can turn around and pay for a caregiver to take care of your loved one. Exactly, and and that's why I said it's it, it can initially be one of the cheapest. So I mean, if you only need somebody to come in and you know maybe cook, prepare your meals, uh, maybe do a little bit of laundry, clean up around the house, and you only need a couple hours a week, it can it can start out as being yeah, a couple know, hundred bucks a month. Exactly, one of one of the cheapest ways. But I have a client that I talked to you know the other day and. They're caring for their parent, and they're providing home health care, and he needs 24-hour a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year service. And you're wow. looking at about $13,000 a month. Really? And Ooh. so home health care can get extremely costly, especially if you need that 24-hour supervision. So there are other alternatives, and we'll talk about, obviously, the other levels of, of health care alternatives for assisted living. Yeah, home health care is a, a really respectful uh, care-providing a uh, way to take care of seniors, but it is ultimately becomes a luxury because exactly. if you can't afford thirteen thousand dollars a month, then you got to look at alternatives like the second one, which which I'm a big fan of because it provides you the social interaction that home health care can never provide. Yeah, and the second level is what we call assisted living facilities, and and they're the ones that if you need assistance with your activities of daily living, which we call ADLs. Um, your cooking, your cleaning, your medication management, medication management. You I, just I'm, need some help. Exactly, and I'm I'm glad Andrew mentioned the the social aspects of it because I, I'm a huge fan of it too. Because you know I went to my grand, like I said, my grandparents are in an assisted living facility in Texas, and you know when I was there last time, I visited them, and there was an event going on three, four, five times a day. I know they have they're Bible being, study. They're exactly. playing bingo, jenga. And then they're having happy hour at the end. I'm like, sign me up for yeah, this cruise said, ship. My my grandparents are, I mean, having the time of their lives. I mean, I know that they're in, you know, they're out of their home now, but they're they're having so much social interaction that they're actually truly enjoying it. And that's why, as Andrew said, I'm a big proponent of these assisted living facilities. And it's not because you know a lot of people have these these mentalities about there's a stigma attached to putting your parents in an assisted living facility. Yeah, there's some guilt associated exactly. with it, but. There some shouldn't these, be. Exactly. I mean, some of these facilities are are so much better because, as we mentioned earlier, you know, some as you get older and older and older, it's become harder and harder to, to become mobile and to move around. And so, exactly, you become reclusive. So, and actually, it's been proven that loneliness can actually increase the stages of dementia and Alzheimer's because that social interaction is key to your brain. Exactly. And so, but it's costly. It is. Well, it is. It you know the average cost in Pensacola is about thirty four hundred dollars a month for an assisted living Ooh. facility, and so you know you have to start thinking about cost because you know thirty four hundred dollars a month is not cheap. And it, but they're not getting cheaper. So if you're a baby boomer, you might be like, change this station because I don't need long term care for a long, long time. Well, this is something you do need to think about. I hope this raises you up in your seat where you're sitting today because if it's thirty four hundred dollars a day. Do expenses get cheaper or more expensive, Scott? They get obviously more expensive. <laughs> yeah, we've all seen how gas prices go up and down, but over time they have become more expensive. Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm loving the fact that gas is at two dollars a gallon. Yeah, it's pretty nice. <laughs> but you know, you look at around like milk and things; everything's getting more expensive. Healthcare is a complex engine, and it gets even more expensive than those. I don't basic think healthcare items. ever gets less expensive. Oh yeah, it's never going it's to. It's because... like we talk about with that freight train. It's just it just keeps getting more and more expensive. I think the the rate of increase right now 
for assisted living facilities is about 5%. Per you're, year. you're spot on. So it's about 5%. So let's do the math. So if you're a baby boomer today and you're in your 70s, 60s, let's just fast forward 10 years from now. I know you might not need it for another 20 or 30, but if you need it just in 10 years from now, that $3,400 expense for one person is going to become $5,300 for one person. So if your fixed income is not going up at 5%, this should keep you up at night. I don't, I don't know how many of you know. I mean, I, I Social Security, I mean, the cost of living adjustment was what? 1.7? 1. 1. Yeah, it's so not you, a huge You're increase. talking about a 3.3% gap <laughs> in the increase of cost. And so if you're only relying so on... So compound interest is not working for you in this example. Exactly. It's working so, against you. You really have to. I mean, it's paramount to plan for these things because y- your your rate of increase on your income is not going to match the rate of increase that these facilities are starting to charge. Yeah. So it's. I mean, it's paramount to to make sure that you're really thinking about these ahead of time and ahead of the game because if you're not prepared, you're going to be out of luck. Absolutely. So. Uh, if you're just tuning in to What Your Money Would Say, I'm your host, Andrew McNair. And I'm your co-host, Scott Malik. And we're talking about how to pay for long-term care for the long term. And we're talking about ways that you can take your financial security in your own hands by looking at long-term care insurance um, options, not just that old traditional long-term care insurance that should be put on the shelf, but the newer types, the long-term care hybrids that we're going to talk extensively about today. But if you have a question that's just burning an inch and that you want to ask, remember the show is live. You can call it 478 31 16. I'll go over that one more time for you so you can get your pen and paper. It's 478 31 16. But if you want to find out how do I pay for this 3400, uh, 5300 potentially in 10 year expense, there's also VA benefits that our um, firm specializes in. And uh, also, uh, Scott specializes in and uh, focuses in on Medicaid planning as well. If you want to find out about all these different options, I encourage you to call my office. At 380-9558, that's 380-9558, or visit us online at swan, like the bird, dash capital.com. That's swan dash capital.com. And I'm glad you mentioned those other options too because, I mean, unfortunately there are some people that, that need Medicaid or that need... They may be already in assisted exactly, living. There are other options because there are some people that are disqualified, as we talked about with the qualifications for... Um, purchasing these types of long-term care insurance, they may not qualify for that purchase. So there may be other benefits or other ways that we need to start talking about creating uh, a a proper plan for paying for these things. And as you mentioned, I I do help a lot of clients with Medicaid planning in order to become Medicaid eligible. There are specific requirements. and If you will, give them your phone number. Exactly. That's why I was going to encourage. I I do offer that free consultation. Um, If you want to call my office, it's 403 Zero three five one. Again, my office number is four zero three zero three five one. Or you can visit my website at www.pensacolaelderattorney.com. That's pensacolaelderattorney.com. So let's talk about some of the different policy definitions that exist in long-term care uh, policy. So if you already own a long-term care policy, hopefully your ears are burning because this is going to be things you need to know about. So uh, Scott starts off with another definition that we need to learn about. So what uh, I guess the, uh, the biggest question people always is what allows me to start receiving this benefit? And I think it's typically the the pe- benefit trigger. Yeah, and that's what they call it typically in policies is a benefit trigger. So it's not when hey I decide I want to start getting that long term care insurance check. Can you start sending it over? The long term care insurance company is not going to respond well to that. They want an actual need. And so that benefit trigger is typically based on assistance with ADL. So when you finally meet one of their ADL requirements or multiple ADL requirements like bathing, transferring, medication management, you have to typically get that signed off by a doctor sometimes. You have to get it signed off by the community. So it's not just a simple process of, hey, calling the company, start sending me the money. No, there's a verification process um, to actually protect the company, not always the family. So, so I guess that moves me on to my next question. Is there a waiting period? Is there an elimination period? And we did talk about this briefly. The elimination period is this 90 to 180 days that a family may have to wait um, before the benefits actually pay. And um, Wait, so, so if you move into an assisted living facility and you are obviously 
accruing bills. So I mean, it's going to cost you thirty four hundred dollars a month. Yeah, the co- the assisted about. living ain't going to say, "Hey, you don't you're not getting your long term care insurance. We'll put your bill on hold." Okay, they don't do that. So the elimination or the waiting period is the the ninety days or the hundred eighty days before the long term care insurance will actually start to pay out. Right. So you have to pay it all yourself. Now, is that with all long-term care insurance, or is that with traditional and hybrid, or is it with just traditional? Typically, all policies will have some sort of elimination period because they want to make sure you're actually not just staying there for a temporary reason. They want to make sure it is truly a long-term care stay. Okay. Um, the next term that families need to be familiar with is what we call ADLs, activities of daily living. People throw around the ADL term all the time, and you're like, what is this ADL? Is that some association? No, it's just an activities of daily living. It stands for you know things like medication management, bathing, house cleaning, transferring, um, incontinence. There's a lot of different uh, ADLs that uh, – and, and by the way, ADL definition changes by uh, the VA standards. It changes by the community standards, the long-term care policy standards. So you want to make sure that your standards are lining up with your loved one's care. And so – let me move on to the next one. I mean, we talked, we've kind of talked extensively about you know what an assisted living facility is, what a, a skilled nursing facility is, and what home health care is. What is inflation protection? Is there is there any way to? I mean, I know we talk about inflation rates and cost of living adjustments, but is there any kind of protection inside these insurance policies that protects against inflation? Well, the the really old ones it really had some great riders and features. Um, some of them, I've seen some r- just really cool things. I've seen where you families bought a hundred dollar daily benefit and then increased every year at five percent, and they bought that ten twenty years ago. So now their benefits are like a hundred and eighty dollars a day. And so I again, I give those families a high five because they didn't even know that their benefit did that, and because the person that sold it to them never explained what they were buying. And so it's a real educational consultation. When families come in for that long-term care preparation assessment, let me share with you what that looks like. What happens is me and Scott, we sit down with you and your family, and we look at your loved one, either your spouse or your elder parent's finances. We take what we call financial inventory. We make sure the power of attorneys are up to date. That's what Scott looks at. I make sure that their incomes are going to meet their potential outlays. And if not, we look at possible VA benefits that will pay up to $2,120 to help offset the care. We look at what if Medicaid eligibility could be done down the road. We'll look at uh, is a long-term care policy going to pay the difference. We plan, and we actually make sure that you're prepared for this uh, stage of transferring a loved one into a community. And so we'll give you an opportunity to call our office because it's an important consultation, and it's free. Let me ask you another question. Is there – when you start receiving these benefits, so say you, you meet the elimination period, you've, you've passed you know, the 90 days or whatever – whatever's required by the policy. Do you have to continue to pay the premium? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, long-term care policies, some of them actually, believe it or not, still make you pay the premium while you're getting the benefits. So you want to make sure that you have what's called a waiver of premium inside the policy, meaning when you finally need the long-term care, they'll stop payment, uh, stop uh, withdrawing it from your account, and that therefore they'll start sending you a check, and you lo- no longer have to send them a check. So there are actually policies that, even if you're receiving their benefits, still require you to continue. Yeah, it, it's not. Okay. It is. It's <laughs> nonsense. But um, you want to make sure that your policy doesn't do that. And uh, again, for that long-term care preparation assessment, so you can ask these kinds of questions, give us a call um, at Swan Capital at eight five zero three eight zero ninety five fifty eight. That's eight five zero three eight zero ninety five fifty eight. You can also call my office at eight five zero four zero three zero three five one. Again, that's 850-403-0351. Let me ask you one more question, um, Andrew. Now, say, for instance, you know somebody decides to get one of these insurance policies and they have buyer's remorse. Sure. Is there a period of time where they could say, well, you know what, I, I, you know, I think I don't want this. I, I, I've had second thoughts. I've second-guessed myself. I, I really want to make sure that you know, this is something I want. Is there a, a, a period of time where they can return that policy and get their money back, or is it just automatically they have that penalty assessed if, for a cancellation or something like that? Yeah, um, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, you know if you can't be a, 
uh, if you're a good salesman, they just throw you into financial services, it seems, it, what we call financial cockroaches. I have a lot of good colleagues and a lot of bad ones, too. So you got to be careful that they're not just selling it's, you. It's not the only profession, man. I have a lot of good colleagues and a lot of bad colleagues. Yeah, and just you got to sort through and make sure you find the right one. Um, when it comes to buyer's remorse, you want to make sure you know what you own. And before you have to you know, stick with it for the long term and you lose a lot of money if you try to cancel it, you want to use the what's called the, the no-cost look-back that the, the state allows. It's just a, look, it's a free look period, and it allows you to look at the policy for 15 to 30 days. Every state, typically Florida, allows you 30 days to look at it. If you don't like it, you send it back, they'll send your money back, and everything's fine, and you don't lose any money, and you, you dodged a bullet there. So if you're wondering, well, if traditional long-term care is not for me, and I want to know more about that long-term care hybrid, I'm going to explain it one more time for you. Again, I would hate to hear another horror story like I hear on a regular basis of families that paid into a long-term care policy, paid into it for 20 years like my grandfather did, and then when his final time of need to use that policy – he, he passed away before he could ever even get the benefit because of the elimination period. So the company kept all the money, and his, le- his legacy was deplenished by it, and he didn't pass that money on the, to his heirs. That can be avoided with what we call long-term care hybrids. It's a way where you can invest or peel off a portion of your portfolio, 50000 100000 25000 some portion you peel off of your portfolio. And what they'll do is they'll guarantee – uh, a, a great rate return that's better than most CDs right now. It's paying two to three percent. I want to interrupt you really quick. Sure. I I, I, I keep talking about that peel off term that you use. I want people to understand that they still have access to this this money. There's not like you're you're putting it in like a vault and you can't ever get it back. Good point. And and so I mean when I when I hear the term peel off for me, it, it makes me feel like. It's something I have to cut off my portfolio. Right, and I'll never see it again. Exactly. Good so point. I think that they need to understand. The analogy that I, I, I want people to fully expl- uh, understand is when if you have a half a million dollar portfolio, you have $500,000 is, is your retirement. When I say peel off, you dedicate a portion of your portfolio. Say, I'm dedicating 100000 whatever it is, $50,000, and saying, I hope to fix my long-term care problem with this segment of money it's not like you lose the money and that's and, the beauty and it's of it still technically an investment so it's still part yeah. of your portfolio so you're still earning interest two to three percent guaranteed you're i mean you still have some liquidity access to it with the 10 percent or the 10 percent free withdrawal which most cds don't ha- have and they're not earning two to three percent but what's cool about this long-term care hybrid is when you finally need the benefits it will take that hundred thousand dollars and times it by three and that hundred thousand turns into 300000 overnight to pay for the long-term care needs of you or your loved one, whoever gets so, it. So for me, I guess uh, the way I see it is it's more, you know, I, I always hear from all of my the people I talk to that are financial experts or that deal with finances, diversify, diversify, diversify. Absolutely. And so for me, it's when I, when I talk about that, you know, that peeling off, it's almost like for me, it's you're actually just diversifying your you investment. Are. It's not that you're, you're peeling off a portion of your portfolio and you're you're diversifying you're, your you're assets. marking it exactly yeah. so you're putting $100,000 into an investment to protect the other assets exactly because if you don't earmark a segment for long term care insurance you've already made a decision if you choose not to do anything and that is to put your the rest of your portfolio at risk because you haven't taken um, the that risk of long term care insurance and and move that risk to, to a company so and they can mitigate and I think it. that's one of the, the the biggest things that I like about long term care these hybrid insurances is, is that I mean my goal is to as a as my in my profession is to protect my client's estate and their right. assets and their legacy so you know taking that that asset and and investing it in protecting the rest of their assets is such a monumental thing and it's so it important that I think a lot of people don't understand. And so sure. I think it's extremely important that if you you know you're listening to the the show that you understand that you're not you're not losing that hundred thousand by putting it into an you're you're probably potentially making more money exactly. than you already you're, are. You're it's investing. a great CD alternative. Exactly, you're investing it in a two to three guaranteed percent return rate of return. Plus, you're using that to protect the remainder of your assets, so that if you do go into an assisted living facilities or a skilled nursing facility, that that cost is so high that you want to make sure that we're not depleting the rest of your assets. So. By that multiplying from you know the hundred thousand into three hundred thousand, you know you can really set your up and protect your estate. 
And, and that is such a key, key point um, because these long-term care hybrids are not discussed enough. And so, it, it, and here's the last point I want to make about that long-term care pri- uh, hybrid. I hope that you stay healthy your entire life, that you never use of it, course. that you go to yeah. sleep. And, and you pass away in your sleep, but it doesn't always work like that. And if let's say you do pass away in your sleep, that money gets transferred to your heirs instead of what happened to my grandfather. It didn't. And so I en- encourage you to call our office at 850-380-9558. That's 850-380-9558. And you can call my office as well set up a free consultation. I encourage everybody to to review their estate planning documents, and, and that's why I do the offer. Don't that. let the dust accrue on exactly. Them. And you know, a lot of people procrastinate. A lot of people. Nobody wants to talk about death. Nobody wants to talk about especially with an attorney. Exactly. <laughs> they think the the clock's just turning on them. Exactly. And so it, it's extremely important because I mean, just to give you an example, if if you wait, you know, you're talking about the difference between a power of attorney and a guardianship. Whereas you know, a power of attorney is two hundred fifty dollars, and the guardianship is an average in Pensacola is about five thousand dollars. So waiting is much more costly and can be much more detrimental to you in the long run. So if you want, you can call my office at 850-403-0351. Again, that's 850-403-0351. All right, we'll see you next time on What's Your Money Would Say.